In this video, we're going to discuss commutators and derive the important relationship which leads to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So let's say we have two operators, A and B. Say A acting on B, and they act on some function f of x, depending on some position x. Now when we've got two operators acting in succession, we first operate with the one which is furthest to the right, and then it acts and returns a result, and then the next one acts, etc., until we reach the end of the string of operators. So uh, two operators acting like this could be written in the same way as b acting on f of x, and then a acting on the result. And then if there were further operators to the right, they would act on the result of a operating on this, etc. So operators act from right to left. So there's a property of operators called uh, commuting. So if A and B commute, then they obey the following relationship. That means that, not them, then. That means that B acting on A, or B acting on f of x followed by A acting on f of x, will equal the reverse order of the operators acting. Will equal the same thing if A operated first or if B operated first. Now this might seem unintuitive where, why there would be cases where this, isn't, where this isn't true because most fundamental mathematical operations are commutative. Uh, addition is commutative, multiplication is commutative, exponentiation is, but we're going to look at some examples where that's not the case. So let's say we have a is equal to x, the operation of multiplying by the variable x, and b equals um, differentiation, d dx, differentiation with respect to x. Then what we have is a, b, f of x is equal to x d dx f of x and this is just equal to the differentiation x first and takes a derivative of the function and then we multiply times x and we get the following result but if we reverse the order we have b act first or sorry, we have A act first on f of x. Then we have d dx of the product x times f of x. Now in this case, the multiplication happens first, so the differentiation occurs on the product, and thus we have to use the product rule. So uh, in some product uv, uh, the result of that is going to be uh, dvu plus udv. So first term, we get derivative of x is 1, with respect to x is 1, and then times f of x. And in the second term, we have derivative of f of x is d f of x dx, in the most general sense. And then that gets multiplied times the undifferentiated function x. So in this case, for one differential operator, one multiplicative operator, we see that these two are not the same. So these, this A and B do not commute. So their operators are not commutative. They're, what we'll see is that their commutator is non-zero. So for two general operators, if we have the quantity AB, operator A and B, minus BA, the reverse order of operating. If this product, this whole set of operators acting on a function equals that function again, then they commute. So this quantity here is a special quantity, this this resulting operator a b minus b a 
is called the commutator. And we indicate that by having a bracket here and saying a comma b. And that is just called the commutator of a and b. So if there's some f of x such that the commutator acting on f of x equals 0 for all values of a and b, then a and b commute. So that's all fairly abstract, but now let's take this uh, principle and apply it to a very specific set of operators. Let's apply it to momentum operator in the x direction and the x position itself. So this operator acting on some function is going to be p x f of x minus x p f of x once you distribute the f of x between the two of them there. So if we write down what the values of these two operators are we have p equals minus i h bar d d x and x is just multiplying times the variable x. So continuing on with that, we'll have, if we substitute in from the previous lines, that minus i h bar d d x times x times f of x minus x minus i h bar. Oh, sorry, I forgot the differential there. Minus i h bar d d x acting on f of x. So we see there's a minus i h bar in both of them, so let's pull out the minus i h bar. We'll have some parentheses. And we have the derivative of x times f of x minus x times the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Okay, so substituting in from what we saw over here, if we have uh, an x and a ddx, uh, sorry, down here, if we have a differential operator acting on an f times f of x, we get these two terms here. So carrying over our minus i h bar. We're going to get one term which is f of x, and then the other is x df of x dx. And then subtracting out the remaining term from the other side, we have minus that same term. So looking closely here, this term is the same as this term. So we can cancel those two out, and their sum will equal 0. So our result here is that we see this eventually equals minus a h bar f of x. So the commutator of momentum and position, noting that we were acting on some f of x from the beginning, so removing that f of x now just to see what the operator was, that the commutator of those two is going to be minus i h bar. Now this is a very important result because uh, it goes into what the uncertainty in the measuring both of those properties at the same time is. So uh, there's a property which we're not going to derive here but which I'm just going to state. If we have the, uncer the variance in a, the un uncertainty squared in a and the uncertainty squared in b, this quantity is equal to minus one fourth the integral of psi star times the commut uh, times the commutator of a and b acting on psi integrated with respect to x and all of this squared. So if we quickly plug in the commutator of p and x here. We'll see that sigma squared p sigma x squared equals minus one fourth psi star 
minus i h bar psi. And then this i h bar here is just a constant, so we can pull it out of the rest of the integral. So we get minus 1 fourth minus i h bar. And then integral psi star psi dx squared. And psi star psi dx, the integral over the entire range of the function, that is the normalization condition. So if this is a normalized wave function, which we're going to assume it is, then this whole integral goes to 1. So that leaves us just with the minus i h bar. And then we square that, and we get i squared h bar squared, and i squared is minus 1. So that gives us a minus h bar squared. And then, so let's continue writing down here. We have sigma p squared sigma x squared equals minus 1 fourth. Then the result of this is minus h bar squared. So the total result is h bar squared over 4. But then the quantity that we're usually interested in when we're looking at products of uncertainties, such as this one, is the square root of that, is sigma p, sigma x, or the standard deviation in momentum uh, times the standard deviation in position, uh, the product of these two, the uncertainty of the product. This is what we were calculating in previous videos when we were talking about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is this quantity here, the product of these two uncertainties. And that's just the square root of this quantity up here, which is the variance of each of them, or sigma p, sigma x, each of them squared. So taking the square root, you just get h bar over 2. So the minimum uncertainty, and actually, let me just go ahead, um, this whole time this has been a greater than or equal to, so this is actually the minimum uncertainty. So let me just denote that. that these are all greater than or equal to's. So the minimum uncertainty in the measurement of momentum and position is h bar over 2. And this should look familiar because this is exactly the Heisenberg uncertainty principle for position and momentum. So you see from what we thought was a very abstract mathematical idea about commutators and operators ends up giving us the Heisenberg uncertainty principle when we substitute in the specific operators for position and momentum. And in future videos we'll see how uh, this in this in general gives us a uh, very very clear results for which operators do and do not commute